All right, happy Wednesday, guys. For today's home workout, we got an AMRAP 10, 10 single leg squats, 10 or five and five med ball twists and throw, 10 air squats, and 10 hand release push ups. So, single leg squats here, guys. We can do uh, quite a variation of uh, squats here. If you don't quite have a pistol, a skater lug, or a skater squat, or even a, a shrimp squat, you guys can go for reverse lunges today. You want to just keep that moving the entire time. Um, 10 minutes is not that long, but we want to find a pace that we can go pretty fast with. So with the single leg squats, you don't want to pick something that will be too slow or we don't have control over the knee and the hip. So find something that you have control over those uh, components and you can be consistent in the workout. Five and five med ball twist and throw. Uh, find an object there, obviously make sure it's a ball and you're comfortable throwing it against that wall. That won't leave any damage there. We're going to be working on that trunk rotation, the speed, the power there, through the hips, um, through the core. So we want to keep these unbroken every single time when we're doing them. Air squats there, back to that leg component of the workout. Um, keep that moving, 10 air squats shouldn't be that bad. Um, you should be able to keep it unbroken every single time. Then 10 hand release push-ups. This is where you might need to break, depending on your strength with the push-ups. Uh, hand release push-ups, the only difference between the regular push-ups is that you're gonna be leaving your hands off the ground there. So this is a perfect way to really work on full depth in your push-ups. So AMRAP 10 again, you're going at a fast pace here, only 10 minutes, short amount of time, but you're moving quickly throughout the movements. Um, once you finish that workout, we'll rest, then go into that afterburner, which is accumulating two minutes of that Elson. So we've done this before in previous uh, workouts in the past. Uh, and always, I'll mention you guys should try to push yourself to go a little bit more each sense every single time. So try to do that today. Uh, again, if you are with the 15 second mark, you can only do 15 seconds at a time in the past. See if you can push yourself to do 20 seconds this time. Or even if you haven't been getting to that full L sit position, um, try to start to build up to that. You'll see those in our uh, workout videos later on in the video. So try to find something that will suit you. Be challenging for those two minutes so you can work on that core position. Uh, really work on those hip flexors which is a great uh, tool to start building your strength and your core for other movements to come. We'll see you guys next for the warm up. All right, we're here for the warm up. So we're gonna start off with part A, which is getting that hip uh, and the glutes nice and active. Uh, so starting off with those hip circles, we're gonna keep it a little bit different this time. We're gonna go from the hollow position and keep those circles a little bit smaller. We're trying to work on moving that hip in a controlled fashion. So, to get into that hollow first, guys, um, so you guys can start from that pike position, that seated position here. You guys are gonna round that back, tuck in that rib cage so you're getting that core engagement. You sit back into that hollow position. Once you're here, we're gonna focus on one leg. We're gonna go for five nice small circles, really just trying to focus on the control of the hip. If it's getting very choppy, Make a smaller circle and as you get more comfortable with it, then you guys can get a little bit larger with that circle or even get a little bit faster. I don't want to see you guys go like this, so make sure it's nice and controlled the entire time. Five in the clockwise direction, five in the counterclockwise direction on that one leg, then switch and do it on the opposite side. Once you've done that, you guys stay on the floor, let's go for those single legged loop bridges. So lift that one leg off the ground, back is flat against the floor. We drive our hips up and really feel that shape our hamstrings and our glutes. 15 on one side, then once you down, switch and do 15 on the opposite side. Again, make sure that hip is opening up each time you do it. Once you're done part A, we're going to go to part B here. So with part B, you're going to start off with a cardio component. Um, six, 60 double unders, 20 calories, or 400 meter run here. Or if you guys have a pull, jump in that pool, go for a quick little swim. Um, once you're done that cardio component, we're gonna go for part two, or sorry, the second movement, which is eight seated leg lifts over an object. So you're gonna get that core nice and active and that uh, hip flexor active. So just pick any object, don't pick a 
the object that's too tall, start with a basic object and then you can get a little bit higher. You're going to focus on that one leg at first. Um, so we've done those leg lifts before with both legs and sometimes a single leg. This time I'm going to go over top of an object. So start with one leg. You're going to keep that core nice and tight. You're going to lift that leg over the object and then back in again. So we're going to go for eight reps. Once you're done eight reps, switch and do it on the opposite side. Again, to make it harder, bring your hands in. To make it easier, hands further back. So play around with it. The, uh, what the focus is to get that core engagement and the hip uh, engagement there. Last movement here, 20 seconds of that single arm plank. So we're gonna go off of one hand. Um, what I wanna see is that I want you to push through that lat into the ground really try to engage that lat and the core as well at the same time. So I'm in this position, we're going to start off nice and wide, have a nice wide base, thinking about pushing hard into the floor, keeping the core tight, 20 seconds here, then 20 seconds on the opposite side. If you want to make it more challenging, bring your feet in, or if you want to make it a little bit easier, go off your knees, but again, still focus on pushing hard through that lat as you're doing that uh, single arm plank. Two rounds of that guys, and then we'll see you guys next for the workout movements. For the pistols today, if you have pistol squats, go for them today. Um, you can go off the end of your couch, um, or if you have a ball or anything that you want to go up to your height to work on that pistol, you can do so. Um, also mentioned you guys can do some reverse lunges for the workout as well. So I'll use a weight for those reverse lunges. I'm gonna try and put a little bit more weight on that front floor of the uh, working leg there. So my left leg's gonna be on the floor there. I'm gonna drive that right leg back, trying to put as much weight in that front foot. And then as I start standing up, I'm gonna shift my weight to that front foot and then stand it up from there. Then switch, opposite leg comes back and then you drive through that front foot. You can also play around with doing some curtsy lunges too with that weight. So um, we're going to send that foot behind that front foot, out to the side, trying to keep the hips as uh, straight as possible or square as possible forward, and then driving through that front foot to stand it up. This one will work a little bit more on that inside of the leg and the stability of the knee laterally. So you can work on that as well as an option for those pistol squats today. Going into those air squats next. So air squats here guys. Big thing, keep that chest tall. I like to kind of keep my hands out in front of me so that when I'm getting tired, I'm not looking down as I'm squatting. So I know some of you when you get tired, hands kind of flop to the sides or in front of you and you're looking down. Try to keep those hands up a little bit taller and look straight ahead to keep that chest tall and also to allow you to keep your weight more distributed towards that mid foot and the heel. So again, as opposed to doing this guys, we're striking for hands up and try to stay on that mid foot to heel more as we're coming to a downer squat and coming up from our squat. With the push-ups here guys, um, again, let's try and keep that nice tight hollow body staying nice and straight the entire time. So with that said, let's not sag those hips that foot tight and then we're curling in that rib cage keeping the abs tight. For the push up here, I like to keep those elbow pits or the inside elbow pits facing out in front of me. So I don't want them to face inwards. I like to keep them facing out in front so that when I break at the elbows, I'm keeping my elbows already nice and tight to my body. So that's a good cue for yourself, especially also when you're coming up, you want to think about pointing those elbow pits back out again. So, you guys can do your push-ups off those toes. You guys can uh, do a push-up where you come down and then rock back up from the knees, then to the toes. Kind of like a kipping push-up there, that's totally fine, as long as you're keeping that core nice and tight. Last thing, you can also try going off those knees. Just one, uh, here I see sometimes with these knee push-ups, guys, is that we keep our hips bent and then come down our push-up like this. I want you to keep yourself nice and straight. So from your knees to your shoulders, you do one straight line, come all the way down, and then back up again. All right, so if you want two-minute abs, feel free.
come to the right place. So we're going to do uh, two minutes of that L-sit hold, guys. I'm going to show you guys some different variations that you can do. Um, obviously, that L-sit is pretty advanced to do, so we need to use some progressions to build up to it. So with that L-sit, guys, basically what we want to try and do is use those hip flexors, use those lower abs to kind of curl up into that V shape. So to start off, we can start off in our leg raise position with our hands back, and we can come up for that leg lift, so keeping both legs straight, holding this position, see if that's challenging. If this is challenging, use this progression for your L-sit today. If you want to challenge it a little bit more, obviously bring those hands a little bit closer, lift up, you guys can use that as a progression for your L-sit. So if you feel comfortable there, um, you can do those progressions. Feel comfortable with the supporting with your body. You guys can, um, again, you don't have to use parallettes here. You guys can use chairs or any two supports. Make sure they're not moving um, or they won't get out on you. So um, find those supports. To start off, you guys can go into that uh, knee tuck position. So you don't have to go with your legs completely straight. So lock out those elbows. Make sure you got good support on those um, PVC pipes, or sorry, the parallettes. Lift those knees up, keep the knees close, and then see how that is. If you find that's challenging, let's just stick to that progression today. Um, if you find it's hard to hold for about a 10 to 15 second range, um, or even less, that's a good progression to work on. Um, if you feel comfortable, you can start raising just one leg out in front, keep the opposite bent. That's one progression to work on to start to get to that full L-sit. Biggest thing here guys, if you even start to build up to that full l sit, make sure you're really pushing into those parallettes and staying locked. Sometimes you start bending at the elbows and losing that stability. You really want to focus on the core and those hip flexors to pull those legs up. So again, once we're in that position, staying nice and tight, pushing hard on those parallettes. Two minutes guys, hopefully you guys get your abs after these two minutes. We'll see you guys tomorrow for the workout.